the government in Washington, D.C. has gotten so good at this with their partners in the mainstream media, it's almost criminal. This quote from Mark Twain is more relevant now and prescient than I think it has ever been. Because we see things being said that are partially true out of context without other pieces of information to bring the entire picture into focus. And they have done this with so many different topics. In today, I'm just going to cover a couple. But most recently, I covered the issue in Florida where they said, oh, you can't go out and have a drink. You can't go sit down in a bar and have a drink because of the resurgence of COVID and all this half truths, almost complete lies, really, out of context. Because it is. It's cowardly. It means you don't want people to have all of the information, to look at it in context for themselves. There's another lie being told, specifically about Florida, that I would like to cover that has to do with the law that people are supposedly quoting saying it's a crime in Florida to wear a mask. Once again, half-truth. Half-truth. But all of it reminds me of something. When I was a kid, one of the greatest joys was waiting for that day of the week to come when the Dukes of Hazzard was on. It was Friday night, I think. It was an Incredible Hulk, at least where I was living at the time. Incredible Hulk, Dukes of Hazzard, Dallas, and then usually by that time it was bedtime, then you had Dynasty or Knott's Landing or something like that. But people have the modern image in their mind of what they thought the Dukes of Hazard was all about. It was really a story of morality. It was really a story of Southern culture, telling the whole truth, getting to the bottom of things. And that's the truth of the story. People think it's oh, it's just about the pretty girl at the bar and then the fast car and the jumps and all this kind of stuff. And it really wasn't. It, this was part of the story. It's what a lot of people remember. But it was a morality play. Just intermingled with Southern culture and Southern values. There was this county commissioner that was corrupt, that was trying to take the farm and always trying to get the two main male characters arrested on some kind of half-truth-based, trumped-up charge. But it took me a while to put this together, because it has all of the ideas in it. By the end of the episode, the truth has come out, and you see, there's police here that are kind of in on the, the corrupt scam, too, but there's also the good one the decent one, the honorable one, that sometimes because he's good, decent, and honorable, gets taken advantage of. And I use this picture in the upper right because at the end of the day, there was always the concept of forgiveness. There was always the concept of reconciliation. And this is covered in multiple episodes. See, the entire thing was narrated by Waylon Jennings, the guy who uh, wrote the uh, lead-in, Dukes of Hazard theme song. And he would walk through the ideas, briefly, of the morality play that was going on. Shakespeare himself, I think, would have noticed this immediately. Now, what is the story? What's the big deal? Here in Florida, there is this rumor going around that there's a law that says that it's a crime to wear a mask. Once again, a half-truth. Here is the law, Chapter 876. No person or persons shall in this state, while wearing any mask, hood, or device, whereby any portion of the face is so hidden, concealed, or covered, attempt to conceal the identity of the wearer, enter upon, or be, or appear upon, or within the public property of any municipality or county of the state. You see, they stop there and say, see, they can make us do this. It was a crime. Well, many places have debunked this. It is not illegal because, once again, telling the half-truth, not covering the entire statute, 
which we have here, it shows applicability, 876- pardon me, dot one five five. You have to have intent. The provision of that law applies only if the person was wearing the mask, hood, or device with the intent to deprive any person of their equal protection. If you intend to use force, threat of force, intimidate, or interfere with any person just going about their day, intend to um, conduct criminal activity, basically you have to have intent to do something, to do some criminal act. Doing a criminal act itself is, of course, a crime. Doing one while wearing a mask is yet even another level of crime, of criminality. See, this is what happens when you tell the whole story. Just like with the restaurants. Are there bars that are shut down? Yes. In the sense that they can't serve open container alcohol on the premises. But quite a few bars serve food. People come in and eat. And they can get carry out. They can serve all sorts of other beverages. The rule was, if the restaurant derives more than 50%, restaurant or bar, I guess I should say, of its revenue from alcohol, the order applies. Well, you can slice pies however you want to slice pies. Meaning like, for example... Let's say somebody comes in and orders a screwdriver, and the screwdriver is $6. Now, for those of you that don't know, a screwdriver is vodka and orange juice. Okay? All you have to have your waitresses do is say, oh, you know, we don't have screwdrivers today, but we are running a special. With the purchase of a $6 orange, we are giving away uh, vodka shots for a quarter, limit two. So... You could bring somebody an orange and two shots of vodka on a platter. Now, who wants that? Who would want an orange and vodka? All your waitress has to do is say, we can serve that orange to you any way we like. Would you like us to juice that and serve it in a glass for you for $6? Sure. So you bring the person the glass of orange juice, and then you bring them the two 25-cent shots. So how do you ring that up in the register? Real simple. $6 for the orange juice. And that's a food and beverage sale. And 50 cents for the alcohol. Now you do that over a whole period of night. I guarantee your alcohol sales, giant air quotes, alcohol sales, will not exceed 50% of your total revenue. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are like, well, wait a minute, what about beer? That's not a mixed drink. All you have to do is this, real simple. With every $30 purchase in food, you get a wristband that entitles you to penny beer all night. So somebody orders food. They order not even 30 bucks. Let's say 20 bucks. They order a couple of entrees. And then they have their beer. However you want to slice the pie, however you want to ring things up, it doesn't attack small businesses. All you have to do is just be a little bit creative with how you do your accounting, which, by the way, if I remember right, was something Boss Hogg was very good at. Remember, he had two sets of books. You know, one he showed the government and the other one he kept, you know, for himself. You see, that's kind of part of Southern culture. That good food, pretty girls, and a government brought well to heal. And of course, forgiveness. And grace. And mercy. And all of those other biblical principles that the North seems to have the problem with. You see, they don't want to talk, the reason they don't want to talk about the uh, Reconstruction era is because it was largely peaceful. Largely, until people from the north decided to once again stick their nose into the business of the south. 
post-war Reconstruction era was largely peaceful until the Industrial Era came. And that's when things started to heat up again. But the Dukes of Hazard wasn't about racism. It wasn't about um, white people are better than anyone else. In fact, it was quite the opposite. Greedy people. Greedy people that want to tell half-truths to enrich themselves. That's who you got to watch out for. And I can think of no better description of the MSM and Washington, D.C. right now. Greedy people telling half-truths to enrich themselves. And it doesn't matter what background they come from. So, anyway, God bless y'all. Lift each other up. Pray for each other. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next time.